Over the last year or so, my ability to focus has easily 10x itself, and I'm here to tell you, you can do the exact same thing by implementing the same strategies I have implemented. As over the last year, I have tried countless number of strategies that are supposed to increase your focus, and in today's video, I'm gonna be boiling down the eight strategies I use on a day-to-day -day basis and have worked best for me to help me achieve more of that focus flow state. So I'm sure you've achieved that focus flow state at least a couple times in your past, you know, where you sit down to get a bunch of work done and then all of a sudden you look up and you're like, where the heck did that time go? And you look down on a piece of paper and you see all the results you've produced in such a short relative time span. Now, I don't blame you if you constantly get distracted as that's what our society has now been geared toward is all these quick bite distractions from social media, from emails to text messages that no wonder why it's so hard for everyone to achieve this focus flow state. But in order to take your success to the next level, you're going to need the ability to focus as not only when that social media notification pops up, do you waste time on social media rather than the task you had planned ahead, but there's also this thing called the cognitive switching penalty. Every time you switch tasks, your brain needs to load that context for that task. And if you're constantly switching from one task to the other, your brain is using all of its power on these tasks and what neuroscientists have found is it takes 23 minutes for your brain to fully load the context of that task where you can truly be focused on that one singular task so that's why it's possible to spend an entire day multitasking or being easily distracted where you feel like you've worked all day and you've been running around but you have very little results to show for it and you're completely burnt out and that's because your brain spent all of its energy on loading these contexts rather than ever focusing on the tasks you had planned. So if you're new here, my name is Matthew. I'm a realtor in the GTA, and this is my channel where I share everything I've learned around real estate investing and personal development. So if you're interested in learning more about those topics, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to not miss out on any one of my future videos. All right, so let's hop on into it. So the very first thing I did to increase my focus was to remove any unneeded notifications. So for me, that was really all the social media apps like Instagram, Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, but as well as to remove all my email notifications. As you see, when you get an email, you typically can respond after a couple hours. So as long as you have it scheduled somewhere in your day to check your emails and respond to them, it's completely all right to wait a little bit to respond to these emails and not let it interrupt your task at hand. Now, as for social media notifications, what I found was when I was working and I got a notification, I may check it sometimes, I may not other times, but even if I had the willpower not to check those social media notifications, I would still have this itch in the back of my brain as I tried to focus back on my work that I wanted to check it, see what was up, see what was going on. And in order for me to truly achieve a higher level of focus, I had to remove that itch. And the easiest way to do that was to remove all notifications and allow me to choose when I wanna to go to social media rather than when I got a notification from Instagram, let's say. And what I found when I reduced all the notifications I had gotten from my social media platforms, I found the time I spent on those platforms drastically decreased. And this is because I was choosing when to go on it and when not to go on it, and I wasn't being influenced by these notifications. As remember, Instagram's whole objective is to keep you on the platform, and if your objective is to increase your focus, Instagram and your objectives don't align. So you need to choose whether or not you want those notifications on or not. Now, the second thing I did to increase my focus was to make sure that all the tasks I was planning out for my day were linked to an external goal and had a time limit with it. Now, this is great for a couple of reasons. So the first reason I found this worked really well for me is by planning out my exact to-do list, I don't have to worry about what I'm going to be doing next. I can focus at the task at hand and then when I'm ready to move on, I can open up my daytime planner and look at what's the next task at hand. Now, I am thankful that my daytime planner has these allotted time slots. And what this has allowed me to do is when I am planning my night, usually the night before, I allocate a certain time on that task. Now, this is great as this really plays into Parkinson's law where your task that you give it will 
fill up the time you allot it. And by having these external deadlines or these made up deadlines that are written down on a piece of paper allows you to help keep yourself accountable to ensure that you're only working so much on this one certain task before you go on to the next. And what I have found, and I'm sure it's happened to you as well, is when you're working on a project and you have months to do, you can easily get distracted by different things. But by setting these artificial times, I'm locked in as I know I only have this amount of time for this task here and I can't waste it doing other little things things here and there. Now the third thing on this list really helped me out at the beginning of my journey of trying to improve my focus and that is by utilizing third party apps that block all other sites and notifications for a certain time period. For me the app that I used was called Self Control. You can see the little icon right here and what this does is it allows you to put a time limit on of all the sites you want to have blacklisted for that time period. So therefore you have no access to it until that time runs out. Now this is great as if you've corresponded and you've planned exactly how long a task is going to take you or the time you've allocated for that task, you can just set it up so that the blocking apps correspond with this. And what's great is maybe you still need to use the internet. What you can do is you can whitelist certain sites so that you cannot access it. And if you don't know what sites to whitelist, another thing you could do is flip it where maybe you blacklist a couple different sites so that you cannot access those but access everything else online. I found this to be extremely helpful at the beginning as it really just cuts you from the knees in the sense that you cannot check Facebook. You cannot go on YouTube and watch a quick five minute clip as there's no option when you hit go. Now for me, I honestly can't say I use this app too much now as I've used it enough and I've built up that muscle where I don't get those urges to go check out that five minute YouTube clip before starting working. But it, I needed this app at the beginning to help build up that muscle. And if you're looking to build up the muscle, this is a one I'd highly recommend you start with. Another great way I have found to build up your focus muscle, because at the end of the day, that is what it is, is a muscle is to meditate on a routine basis. Now, this is something that I have recently just started doing on a consistent basis. I've dabbled with it in the past as I'm sure many of you might have but I really didn't start to be consistent until just recently and I can say that it has truly increased my ability to focus. Now when I'm talking about meditation I'm not talking about sitting down for 30 minutes and meditating. I mean you can do that if you want but I'm talking start simple. As you can see it's all about small tiny habits and small tiny changes go a long way. So for me to help implement this I just do at least five minutes every day. Ideally, my goal though is 10 minutes. So when I first started with meditation, I found my mind was a constant monkey mind with random thoughts popping up as I was meditating. And I've heard so many people say that, oh, you're only supposed to focus on your breath and you're only supposed to be focusing on the now. But me as a human, right? Like random thoughts pop up in your brain all the time. And at first I was getting discouraged by all these different things, thinking, oh, I'm not doing meditation correctly. But there was this great interesting quote by Naval that I can't necessarily remember, but basically what he said was that meditation is all about taking your monkey mind and bringing it back to the present where you can focus on the present moment. And this is essentially like a rep in the gym if you were to have a bicep curl or a bench press. Now, each time you're going to do it, it's going to get slightly easier and easier. And over time, not only will you quiet your monkey mind, but those times that those thoughts do pop up, you'll be able to bring your mind back to the present faster and quicker, allowing you to be more focused. And that just builds your focus muscle. Similarly to meditation, I find when I'm working, especially in a deep flow state, sometimes these random thoughts or processes or solutions to problems that I was thinking about before just pop up in my head due to my subconscious brain. And what I found worked really well to keep my focus on the task at hand is to have a notepad and pen beside you when you're working at all times. So that when you do get these bursts of thoughts in your head, you can still focus on the task that you have at hand if you simply just brain dump quickly on a piece of paper what that task was, what that reminder your brain gave you so that you can return to it when the task is done. This will ensure that you're not forgetting any of those eureka moments you could say, but as well, you don't have to worry about that cognitive switching balance where you can then all of a sudden are on a different tangent altogether than what you had planned. Now the sixth thing I do to increase my focus is rather a simple one, but an absolute critical one for me, and that is working out or being active on a daily basis. 
as I find when I sit down and work and I haven't at least gone for a walk, if not actually had a good workout in, I have all this bundled up energy that I don't know to do with. And I find when you're eating healthy and working out, your overall energy levels are increased in a positive way where you're not jittering off the wall, but rather you can have more of a calm energy towards you where you can focus on the task at hand, but still be alert enough to really be active and engaged with that task. Now, the seventh thing that has increased my focus and something I recently just started doing is actually blocking time out to recover and recharge your batteries. As you see, no one can work 24 seven without getting burnt out to some extent. Now, you may be able to work more than others, but if you're working 24 seven, you'll eventually be burnt out. And while yeah, you may be able to continue working 24 seven, that doesn't mean the work you're doing during that time where you're constantly grinding is necessarily your most productive or effective work. And the whole point about being focused is so that you can actually achieve effective and efficient working. So you need to make sure your batteries are well recharged so that when you do sit down to the task at hand, you have enough energy and drive and just willpower and motivation for that matter to get to that task at hand and you get that by taking a step back for a second, taking a deep breath, and then allowing yourself to recharge. And the eighth and final thing I have done to really increase my ability to focus is when I really got an important task done or I have a super, super busy day that involves a lot of deep focused work, what I do is I take my phone and I put it in a completely different room. What I have find this has done is absolutely skyrocket my productivity for those days that I need to get it done. Now, this isn't something that I do every day and that's why I have had the notifications turned off, but when I need to get something done that is truly critical, I'll remove my phone from it. And this not only just reduces the urge to check social media once in a while or to take a break, um, but I find when you are truly in a deep flow state, you can really lose track of time as long as there's no distractions. And while yes, I do have a lot of notifications turned off, I still get those notifications for any text messages or phone calls that could come in. And if I'm truly trying to achieve a deep state of work, I don't want any urge to try to reach to the phone. I don't want any distractions. I want to have that focus flow state on that one task at hand. So those are the eight tactics that I have found have worked best for me after trying out countless number of strategies and tactics that are supposed to increase your focus. So if you found a tactic or a strategy you want to implement yourself, make sure to hit the like button. So it really helps me out with the YouTube app algorithm. And if you're looking to improve your productivity and focus more, one of the things I'd highly, highly recommend you do is start planning your weeks out. And if you're interested in learning how exactly I plan my weeks out in a streamlined process using the most powerful app I have used, you can check out the video right here. I go over my exact process of planning out the week. This just allows me to be more focused and intentional every day with the tasks I have at hand. Other than that, if you can subscribe, if you're interested in any personal development, real estate and investing content to just continue your education as I'll be releasing videos here every week on Thursday going over those topics. Other than that guys, I hope you have a great and successful week and I'll talk to you next week.